Okay, so that's the first little portion of my egg white gone in. And I'm folding, I'm it's stirring that in really, pretty much. Now I have to say, I think sometimes as well, you can be too breathless. Do you know what I mean when you're doing souffles? I mean, let, this is not a life or death situation, okay? But on the other hand, you do want to take care. So the classic folding technique is as follows. I prefer to use a, f a firm, flexible rubber spatula like this. Cut down through the middle of the mixture and fold over. Then you take your bowl, in my case saucepan, give it a quarter turn, 90 degrees, like that. And each time, and then you keep going. When I've done that four times, um, that might have been a little more than 90 degrees, but you know what I mean. I then I'll give it one sort of 360. Does that make sense? And basically just keep going like that. Now remember what I was saying there about a moment ago. You don't need to be, you don't want to be too breathless about it, okay? Because you have to blend the egg white with the cheese. So if there are bits of egg white which are being sort of belligerent and are just literally jumping in front of the spatula each time you do it, well then take control of the situation and just with the tip of your spatula, sort of go in the opposite direction and sort of break them in. Okay, you must still want volume, you still want air, but you know, there's a point if you're so careful with this, you're still here doing this in 15 minutes time. I mean, apart from the fact that you're over us, uh, everybody's over us, and it's, you know, it's, you know, it's just not doing, it's not necessary. So that's it, I've got a lovely kind of foamy looking mixture. There's a little bit of egg white there that isn't, clearly isn't mixed through, which must be, so just pull that in with the tip of your spatula, a few little bits there, that's it. Okay. Right, then. Um, I tasted the mixture earlier to make sure that it was tasting nice and piquant, which it pretty much was. So I just spoon the mixture into my um, bowls. Again, just a nice big spoon like that. So it's kind of as much as possible one movement, that makes sense. It's much more pleasing for you as a cook, I think, because you're not going backwards and forwards. I will need that spatula again in a minute, so I'll keep it. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, with this particular souffle mixture, you could put them into the fridge for up to a half an hour. So what that means, you're you put, the results you'll get will be about 95% out of 100. As I think, hopefully when I put this in now, I'll get 100%. It's better to get 95% than 65%. Do you know what I mean? The, because you've made a pragmatic decision. I'm doing this before everybody arrives. I'll have them in the fridge. I'll be as cool as a cucumber. I'll take them from my fridge and I'll put them into my oven. There's no hassle. You know what I mean? I'm not sweating. Does that, does that make sense? Sometimes you have to just ask yourselves those sort of questions. And the other thing, by the way, which we will show you tomorrow, is how you make a twice baked cheese souffle. And that is, you make souffles like this and you cook them and you merrily watch them collapse, as souffles will do. And then you use those, you bake it again with cream and cheese in addition, it's called a twice baked cheese souffle. It's not the same as these, it's absolutely delicious. Um, it's a standout dish in a, a, in a two-star Michelin restaurant in London called La Gavroche, 